get uh, your fish on here for you, Glenn. Oh, all right. Is that a minnow or just a... Big hook set. Yeah. <laughs> You're a shrimp. Wind's on. Wind is on again. Trout, huh? Captain Carey is doing a favor because this 53 year old has never filleted a fish because he always had brothers to do it. And now he's going to do a little video to show um, people how to fillet. We have a nice flounder and a few trout. Flounder slippery. From the wind. That's a nice fish. That's a good one. That's a good trout here. Two. And a couple of other trout pieces. Did anybody else catch a trout? Huh. Nope. I'll tell you what I'm gonna go do is get me another pan of water though. Alright. The trick. The most important part is your fillet knife. Have a very sharp knife, right? And it's, it's sharp, but you see how it bends right here? Yeah. A good fillet knife will bend right there so that you can get right up close. See how this one's thin right here in the center? Uh-huh. That's I've had this knife for years, but hmm. well, the good news is here you just throw it right in the uh pond, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's nice. Alright, so from the fin right here there's a lot of meat up here on the head you just cut down down through here and then these don't have big scales on them but I'll start right here and lay right up against that backbone yeah right on the see, backbone yep see how that's just traveling along the backbone it's filming though it's okay and just I just lift it up and run this along the backbone you can see the See the ribs right here? Oh, yeah. This is the rib cage. So you're not gonna, you're gonna stay out of it. A lot of people will just cut it across right here. I don't know why I don't do that. It's probably better too. But and from, when you get back into this particular spot right here, you can uh, go ahead and cut through and just lay it all the way down to the tail I leave that much on it yeah. because I'm gonna flip it around I always worry more too much about this right here if I should just cut right through the skin because there's nothing to, oh, you know, there's right. nothing there yeah oops it's dark because it's still recording yeah it's still recording and then I turn it and flip it like this that's why I leave that little skin right there. Oh yeah. Because then just go I'll right do this. on the other side. Yeah, and then you pick, just roll it up like that. And there you've got a fillet, and we'll trim that up in a minute. I've got some ribs I can feel right there that I cut through. Bait. Yeah. 
All right, so it's just the same thing on this side. Right down the back. You go this way, especially with a redfish or something, because the scales are, if you go the other way, you're kind of cutting into the scales. If you go this way, you're just kind of pushing them to the side. Oh, okay. Oops. Come on, I got through there. I got through that going there. It's actually nice having the camera right here like this. Push it through. I already did. I'm making a mess out of this one, but these uh these small trout like this, you could cut right straight through the ribs and then just cut the ribs out later. Seems like it'd be a lot consistent. easier this way. Filet right. like. This one have a pretty good chunk of meat on it. It'll also have a harder rib cage, so definitely got to cut around this one. First fish of the day. Or was it the second fish? That was your first one right here. Adam got skunked today, didn't he? Mm -hmm. I just about did. So did I. Although I probably would have had two more if my stupid line, I don't know. Confused. I don't know if the line prank or the uh, knots came out of that tape of line. Yeah, that's weird, isn't it? I'm doing a bad job. There you go. That's all belly fat right there. I'm coming over here. <laughs> The meat right there, that's ribs. A little bit of meat on that, but not enough to. It's all got some bones in it, too. I'm real particular about my fish when I clean it. Uh -huh. So, you see all this red meat on here? Uh huh. I don't like red meat because it tastes real fishy. Oh, really? Yeah. That's, you always want to cut that out when you can. Most people, some people do, some people don't. But what I'll do, like right here, I'll just take that. And oh, it's just a just, little on Yeah, the top. it is just, yeah, you get right next to the skin, and that's where this red comes from. But I'll just take it right off. And then when I go to trim, when I go to cut this up to fillet it, if you're going to fillet it, I don't know what you're going to do. I, I cut right down this bloodline, and then I'll cut it off like this and off like that. Oh, okay. So if you're going to bake it, you just have to make two little triangular cuts. Pretty fish. Yeah, they're nice and wide, aren't they? I've watched these things get filleted a million times. All right, these are, I've not done a bunch of these, but there's a line right here. And you get four fillets off each flounder. Yeah, and you just follow that line. Okay, 
That's much better. Sharper knife? Mm-hmm. You run right down his backbone. Then you just get on either side. Just start working your way down through. You have a crab pot here. Do you get a lot of crabs? Mm -hmm. It's a pretty little filet. This is the side that doesn't have as much meat on it. I guess that meat goes down in there a bit further than I thought. You see what it does. This is called the stirrup right here. You don't eat this, but I love filleting these because they're just so, I don't know. They just, you get right down to the bone, you know? Yeah. They're all muscle. Now, are these scaly fish too that we have to. Uh uh. No, I didn't think so. So, that's one of four. Beautiful little fillets. It's a nice size. Um, you get more off of one fish than you do on uh, like two trout, almost. They're smaller. They're thinner. Yeah. But boy, they're firm and. Tastes good. Look at this one. Look how, that, look how pretty that is. And that's the small side. So there's a quarter of it done. So what I'll do is just turn it around. Get on that backbone again. Just run right down the edge of that backbone. You just see how he follows that. Not sure how far up that goes. Looks like there's still some meat up there, so we're just going to continue on up to the head and get it all. Like I said, that's the scurrying. You don't eat that anyway. side's got the most meat. This is dark side. I bet you catfish would love this around here. Mm-hmm. I'm sure they do. Again, right down the middle. Like yeah, I know there's a I'm line. Doing. You can see a line on it. And it's nice to have a fillet knife that's sharp, that's for sure. Just follow that line. Just keep going underneath, right? Mm-hmm. There's a lot of meat up there on their heads. See many gators back here this year yet? Uh, not, haven't seen many yet. I bet George is fast at this. Oh yeah, so is Nikki. George will critique me. Yeah. He taught me how to clean my first one. I don't remember 
him seeing how far the head went up that head, you know. And voila. Beautiful day, but it was windy on the water. All right, Janine. Thank you to Captain Carey. Janine, I'm going to make you a board like this so you can just put it over your handrail on your deck, but I'm going to make yours a little bit longer and a little bit wider. But that way you can just get it off, go to a hose and wash the scales off and put it somewhere to dry. Good to go till the next time. Because I trim everything up while I'm here. What do you mean? I trim the meat up and then I take it into the sink. So each piece of this right here, uh -huh. I'll look at it. It's got a little chunk of white right there that is skin. And I'll, if they were, the flounder trims up nice. This is skirting. You don't eat the skirting. So I cut it off. Actually, that all that right there is screwing. Those are beautiful plays, though. That's the last piece of that flounder. And then, I don't know if you're going to deep fry them or not, so I, I doubt don't know. it. Probably not. But if you do it, do it in a, like a cast iron skillet. I would imagine that's what she'll probably do. Well, if she does, then, like I say, cut I would out. cut down this bloodline, uh -huh. and then I'd cut, you can do it, leave it all on one. See that how that oh. just gets the red out right there? Oh, yeah. But I do that just because that's where your fishy taste comes from. Isn't that interesting? And then, this is what I do. I, I'll put it in uh, lemon water and let it soak for about three hours in lemon water, and that'll that'll bleach it out yeah, we're actually not going to eat them till tomorrow well i mean before you guys cook them yeah three hours before you cook them put them in like one part lemon five parts water or four parts water see that little skin left on there that's why it helps to have a good fillet knife is that the sharp one yeah i just sharpened this one I always check for ribs make sure i don't have any ribs on there bit of skin right there which won't hurt you but I just, like I say I'm particular when it comes to uh, cleaning fish because I like it to be there's a I feel a bone right there right there's some oh, ribs yeah. see the rib cage uh -huh. um, that's been the one I tried to cut through do you ever use these for your crab traps uh, the heads or just uh, the, the rest of our fish, yeah. Yeah, I never have, but I haven't really tried to catch any crab back here since I've been fishing. I should. Missed. That's a neat idea with the bleach. I think my brother does salt water. Some people do milk. Really? Yeah. But I th I the lemon, the, it's the acids in the lemon that is what bleaches it out. And, it, and it, it also gives it a little bit of a lemony taste. You don't want to put too much in because it will take on a lemon taste. Huh. But, all right, we'll go rinse these off and put them in a bag and you guys will be in business. Well, I certainly thank you. Thank you for watching Fishing Prince. I said it! What?